Hey guys, welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is brought to you by Hein Karn, uh, and it is called Teflorock, the Game of the Gods. Teflorock is for 3 to 9 players, takes about 30 to 90 minutes, depending on the number of players in the game, and it's for ages 13 and up. In the game Teflorock, you're going to be playing as one of the mythical gods, like Heimdall, or Freya, or of course the ever-popular Scandi. And you're going to be trying to bid um, to collect basically runes. And of course you're going to have words in your hands and utilizing those runes to turn into words. Uh, as you uh, play down words and as you discard them, you're going to be getting power. And the way to win the game is to either play all of your words from your hand or simply uh, gain up to 500 power, which you can do as well. Uh, throughout the game, players are going to bid on the different cards that are played down. There's a nominator who's going to choose to either buy out players or bid as well. All this kind of crazy bidding, auctioneering uh, stuff going on. There is a big deck of cards for all the different words and uh, tells you what their values are as well as what letters are needed to do so. And then of course there's a big deck of runes and each of the runes have a different rarity and depending on the rarities how many runes you're going to find in the deck. Uh, and the game's just going to continue through that. Eventually somebody's going to pull off the point or somebody's going to pull off the discard and win the game. Alright, let me go and show you what it looks like. So here we've got Teflorock, the game of the gods and everything included. You're going to get this box here, which is kind of cool because when you open it up, it has these little paper inserts, which means that when you put like a player screen in here and you need to get that last one out, it's kind of hard. You can actually just pull this little paper insert out and boop, it comes right on out. Never thought paper inserts would be so cool, but these ones are. You're also going to get, of course, the rules to the game and all of these different player screens that are going to hide your money or your power. Uh, these are the different decks in the game that you'll be getting. You've got this deck here, which has got all the different words which you're trying to basically make and then you've got these rune cards this is the back of the runes these are common runes these are rare these are like the legendary runes uh, the, the cost is of course or the power is 10 20 and then 30 which you can gain uh, every player is going to get one of these sheets uh, these screens so if I just give out I don't know we'll give out four of them here uh, then everybody is going to take them and they're going to set them up and of course on inside here is actually going to tell you uh, the different phases and all that kind of stuff as well as the rarities and the different types of runes and how many of them there are, which is also pretty cool as well. And uh, then you're going to do the setup of the game. Over here you have all of the different powers and of, or all the, all the different power, which is of course basically the currency of the game. In the setup, each player is going to draw five word cards and then they're going to uh, select three of them and return two. Uh, so each player is going to get three of these words, basically. And then each player is also going to have a certain amount of runes in their hand. You're going to get two runes for each player. You're going to go ahead and shuffle this, this whole deck up and deal out two runes for each player. Go ahead and put this basically in your hand of cards so that nobody else sees it. And you're going to take five runes from the top of the deck and place it face up in on the field for people to... Uh, to gander at because they're going to be using these runes to make a word. So if I take a word over here, you can see this one here requires this I, this little F, and this kind of looking C little thing. And of course, none of them are here, but there are, of course, are runes in the deck that will allow you to make that word. So I'll put that back in the deck there. Uh, then, of course, every player is going to get 60 power, so 20, 40, and 60. Each player is going to get the, that, which you'll be trying to gain 500 power in order to win the game. And uh, the first player is going to start off as the nominator. Uh, to begin the game, the nominator is basically going to be considered the first player, and that's the person who sees a raven or a crow last. He's going to have the option to either draw two uh, word cards and return one, or he can uh, draw two rune cards and discard one. And whenever you discard a card, it can come from your hand. It doesn't come from the ones that you draw. So uh, maybe he chooses to discard this one. When you discard a rune card, you're going to gain power equal to the value of the rune. Commons are 10, so he would just simply gain 10 power. And uh, then you could go ahead and uh, have players bid on this discarded rune. The person who bids the most, basically a silent bidding, where you're going to take the runes and put them in your hand. Whoever has the most is going to get that rune. Uh, put it in their hand then after that you're going to do flipping of the runes in a three or four player game you're going to take one rune and flip it over in a more the player game in a five player game you take uh two six player you take three so on and so forth and then after that you're gonna have players and they're gonna do a bidding phase where everybody's gonna put their hands in and the person uh 
uh, everybody's going to then reveal, uh, except for the nominator. And the person who has the highest will get it. If there's a tie, uh, it's bid again. And the nominator is going to be able to choose, after everybody's put their hands out, to go ahead and buy out everybody and get the runes, or allow the highest bidder to take a rune, and then the next highest bidder he can choose to buy out, or that player will take the rune as well. And um, after that, then the... Uh, Next phase would begin, basically, which is the optional phase. A nominated player can play a word from his hand, and if he does play a word, he's going to need to have all the different letters to play that word. So if he had this word in his hand, and he these three specific symbols, he could play that along with the words. And in the game, uh, to begin it, you're going to have words that start off on the table. You're going to have one word there, and there's going to be three spots total. And when you play a word from your hand, so let's say he had this one in his hand, he could play it because he had all the different letters, he uh, would be able to place this on top of another word or in one of the other two spaces, and if uh, if he did place on top of another another word, if it had the same one of the same symbols on it, like this little uh, V looking thing right there, as you can see, then he can actually ignore one of those, which allow him just to play these specific three runes and of course play this word. Other players will then cascade, and everyone will get a chance to do the same thing. And after that happens, basically uh, the end of the game phase could trigger, which is not likely in the first round. But if anybody has 500 power, or if anybody has played their last word card then the game is going to be ending and a specific thing will happen where all players will get another chance to try and score a word. If not, the next player will become the nominator and they're going to also start playing, um, you know, doing the same thing, basically. Uh, drawing or returning words, drawing and discarding runes, gaining the power, having the bidding phase, flipping over new runes and having players bid on those specific runes until somebody's going to win the game. And like I said before, the specific thing that happens during that phase is each player, other than the player who finished is going to get a chance to either uh, take a rune from the play area and add it to their hand and then play a word if they can, or they can choose to draw two runes from the draw pile and uh, take one of these guys and then of course play a word if they can. And the final one is drawing two words and then playing uh, one of the words they drew if they can. Usually this is the last resort effort, uh, but it might pay off, especially if you have a lot of runes, but no words that match them. And then of course, you're just gonna tally up all of these score and whoever has, um, well, sorry, not tally up the score. Then whoever has the 500 points is going to win instantly. Or uh, if a uh, player is discarded at the same time, it could be considered a tie. But that's the basic idea of the game, right? You're flipping over runes and bidding and buying. That is Teflock. All right, let's talk about it. All right, so a couple caveats for the game. The first thing is when you just cut a card based on the rarity, you're going to gain points 10, 20, or 30 based on the type of rune. Uh, you can also, whenever you play a word, from your hand onto either another word on in, in the in the pile of different three different piles uh or just a, an empty pile at the beginning of the game, you'll gain the amount of power up here. And then finally, whenever you are bidding on a rune, you uh, will pay the nominator for the cost of what you are bidding, unless he chooses, of course, to buy out the runes. Uh, a little thing as well is the nominator is going to be the one that selects the runes to choose from during the bidding phase. In a four player game, it's one, five, it's two, so on and so forth. He will specifically decide which runes are the ones that are gonna be bid on, and the other players are going to be the ones that are bidding. Uh, that is the basic idea of the game. Obviously, power does not leave the field once it, it enters, so somebody is always going to be gaining in power, so the game is going to come to a conclusion rather than players discarding runes or whatever whenever you're bidding. It's either going to go to the nominator or the player who played a word. So that's the basic idea of Tefla Rock. So let's talk about it. First of all, the artwork is so-so. It has like some interesting... like old-timey artwork, I guess. Uh, the the player boards in the back are nice. It illustrates everything you need. I was kind of hoping that the gods or goddesses would have player powers, but they don't. And I thought that was kind of weird because, like, all the gods, it has this, like, full-on explanation of, like, what Loki is and what he's done and all that. But it doesn't really give you any reason to be Loki other than just, uh, you know, he looks cool. But that being said, it is a uh, simple in nature auction game with a lot of different aspects to it. Of course, when the game ends, it's not necessarily who ends the game, it's the person who has the most power at the end of the game, regardless of who ends it. That's just kind of what triggers the end of the game. But you're trying to play words and you're trying to gather runes from other players. Now the nominator has a lot of power in the game because he is able to buy people out. But when he does that, he's going to lose the option of gaining power for the next rounds. And in a big player game, that's very, very scary to do that unless you really really want that specific rune 
And also, when players are bidding on the runes in a game, a game of five players or more, the first player can never withdraw, but there's a withdrawing rule which allows players, after the first player is taken, they can say, you know what, I don't, I don't want, I'm gonna take my money back. Which you can actually check the rules for as for how that works. Um, which is actually really cool. I really like that aspect of the game because it kind of gives a little switcheroo of, what, of what's going to happen. You're not really sure. And also the nominator gets to stealing what, specific runes, but he can buy people out, right? He can take all of the runes for all the cost, or he can wait and see what that person who has the, who's been the most is going to take. And that might be the one thing he needed, or it might not be, right? He could get it for very, very cheap because he could just choose to buy out the last player who was bidding, and in which case he would get the rune he needs. So there is a bit of luck involved, of course, what runes you start in your hand, and uh, the way the flow of power works based on cards you choose to discard, which is really cool because when you draw cards, like uh, rune cards, you can put them in your hand, then you can select a rune you don't want. And usually I would choose to select like a really big legendary rune, to go into the graveyard, because that'll give you a bonus points. But then again, players can choose to bid on those cards, so they don't just get removed from the game, right? You could have just messed yourself over, because now players can t take that card, which would normally cost them a boatload in the bidding phase, and it might be a little cheaper, because it's a very specific card that is needed for specific players. So do you want to discard those cards, or more common ones that most players can get? Overall, it's a solid bidding game. It has this auction-type feel, and you feel like the gods are trying to gain as much power as possible, and sometimes Sometimes you don't want to end the game because if you do then the power slide could go to somebody else like oh this player's got a lot more power than I do do I want to end the game and if that does happen uh, you're basically messing yourself over so you have to be very careful when you choose to do specific things in the game how you choose to take additional words and when you choose to play them because you know that the cascade can happen uh, this is a cool auction game people who are gonna like auction games will enjoy it if the artwork turns you off you know that could be a thing or if uh, the lack of player powers that was just kind of a little sad for me I was like hoping to see a little more involved with that it gives you a ton of components for it and a ton of players can play this game which is nice when you have a, a large gathering of people I wouldn't consider it a family party game more I'd consider it somewhere in the middle of like deep strategy and, and like party although it feels like it should be a party game with how large uh, the amount of players it can be um, overall, it's a solid little game. If you enjoy auctions, you should definitely check it out. You can look it up in the description down below, and you can choose to purchase it if you're interested in it. Uh, Tefalarok, the game of the gods. Fear, tear.